everybody. How are you guys tonight? Oh my goodness. Linda, thank you. Um, that was a very beautiful thing for you to say there. Um, all right, you guys, let's check in with everybody and see how you are. Um, Linda's here and Gail, I see that. Uh, Gail and coming along, Lupe. <laughs> hey, Linda and <laughs> Inca. I mean, Linda, <laughs> Lupe, I think we. Lupe, you can give us all new names, I think. I think Linda, good name for Linda is Inca. That would be good. Uh, Tamara's here. Yay. She just, oh, I just, uh, I'll tell you what else what came up just a few minutes ago. So, um, yes, I feel, oh, no, I, I, I already, hey, Brian, hi. I got the, um, Triple Kiss Cup the other day in the mail. Yay, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's gone above and beyond all these amazing stories. Plus, she brought us all together, which is a blessing. It is a blessing. It's been a blessing for both of us. For It's a two-way blessing. It's a, a multi-way blessing. It's a, it's a big blessing of buckets. Buckets of blessings, blessings of buckets. And I have only gotten a little ways on my wine. So, and there is Angie. So the brother and sister are in the house tonight, Brian and Angie. Okay. No sibling arguments, please. You know, had grandkids here. Brother, big sister, little brother. Yeah, been there. <laughs> Angie. <laughs> Yay. Um, and Tamara Maria. <laughs> Brian, hey, dude, Larry's here, and uh, um, probably, yes, Larry is, is to help a guy buy our ta tractor blade. He'll be here as soon as he can. Oh, helping a guy buy our tractor blade. All right, cool. Is the, is the tractor named Blade, or is it a tractor blade? <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm giving you a bad time. Um, I have. Yeah, we ain't got time for that. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, man, you guys, it's been a day. Um, it's uh, trying to, to plan everything. Um, I'm going to be, uh, we were going to be going to Eugene for Thanksgiving um, for our daughter, but she just sent a message, and one of their friends um very close friends that was in their wedding and at their wedding and we've known them for a long time. Their uh, young son just died. He's the same age as my youngest grandchild. So she asked if I could come down and watch the kids after Thanksgiving um, for a few days while they go to California to be with their friends and for the services. And they're going to take McLean because he was very tight with the older son, and um, that was a sad, sad situation. Um, don't know all the details, just know that it, uh, she said it was something that was not, was, was very sad, very sudden, so, yeah. Anyway, so that's going to take up some time, <laughs> so it's a good thing that I have already planned on um, taking that hiatus, um, starting this Sunday, but, um, today I was having some fun planning up th out the next few days of, of what I want to share and what I want to, to read. And, um, it just, oh my gosh, it just, um, yeah, it solidified the fact that, that I'm not going to be able to step away from this for that long. I, I may not come back to it on a night, nightly thing because that's I, I don't get any of my photography done, some other things. But I have a feeling it's going to come back to being, you know, two, three times a week type of story time. So yay. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I already set aside a bunch of holiday books. <laughs> and so that's kind of fun. That is kind of fun. And then last night, I edited and put up a book review on Amazon. 
for uh, on a children's book on um, the year the perfect Christmas tree. And so I did that just because I thought, you know, I'm always yammering about books. I might as well tell a bunch of people at least so they have an idea what they can, what's good and what's not. That was a recommendation of some of my uh, live streaming friends um, to do this. And I've been bragging on you guys in the fluid art community about how well you guys do premieres and how it promotes community. Um, we've been talking because the Ecamm community is quite active. It's an amazing group of people that work on live streaming and Ecamm is just an amazing program, um, only for Mac, but it's still absolutely amazing. And that community has grown and helped me and, and the people that I've met through that. And they do a lot of just mainly live streams and not about a lot of them were familiar with premieres like you guys do. And I was just always promoting the premieres about how great they were. And somebody finally hopped on and said, you know what? These are kind of cool, you know, and what they do. And I'm just like, yes, yes. Fluid art is amazing that you guys have that. Um, so many different communities, too, within it, different circles. And for different reasons, different circles of groups. Um, and you each find the circle or group that fits best for you. Um, I really like Angie and Brian and Larry's community with Christina Welch and that group there that all ties together there. I think it's just really an exceptional group of people. It's fun to see. It's fun to watch. And it's a really, I don't know, safe, fun place to be. Um, oh, you miss me, bitch. <laughs> but, Gail, you have a new Bluetooth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, Brian, your com you guys' community is pretty amazing, absolutely amazing. So um, I'm always, uh, it, it's something that I kind of aspire to. We've got our little mini community here with this with this story group, and the more that we add to it, but I still aspire to keep it in that same sense of community like yours has your you, with you guys, and I think it's really cool, and I think we've managed to do that had a, a bump along the way earlier in the year, way back in like March or something like that, April, but we won't go there because that was crazy. And nobody in this group had um, anything that they needed to worry about with that. But we worked it out and I'm everybody that's here is here because they want to be and they respect each other and we love each other. And that's awesome. So cheers. So tonight, books for you guys. Um, I really wanted to, I, I, I have a couple and, and the titles might not want, um, and, and the title of my, um, thing was a bit of nothing matters. And that comes from the combination of the two books that I'm going to read. The first book is by Christian Robinson. And um, let's see if I can get his first screen share up on him. See if you can see this. So he's an illustrator, author, animator, and designer based in Oakland, California. He's born in Los Angeles and grew up in a small one-bedroom apartment with his brother, two cousins, aunt, and grandmother. Drawing became a way to make space for himself and to create the kind of world he wanted to see. Isn't that the truth about art? It becomes a thing that helps us to create the kind of world we want to be in and want to see. What does it say that I spent part of the day drawing gnomes? Huh. Oh, well. We won't go there. <laughs> um he studied animation at California Institute of the Arts and would later work with the Sesame Street Workshop and Pixar Animation Studios before becoming an illustrator of books for children. The Christian Robinson for Target collection released in August 2021 includes more than 70 items across home and apparel for kids and babies. 
His books include the number one New York Times bestseller, Stop on Mark, Last Stop on Market Street, which I read to you guys and we all loved. It was the one about the they left and um, the grandmother took him to go on the bus ride and they kept having to go further and they went in to serve, um, went to go serve at the soup kitchen. Oh my gosh. Um... It won Caldecott on Coretta Scott King Honor, Newbery Medal. Um, New York Times bestseller, The Bench, written by Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. And his solo projects include another, which was named a New York Times bestseller, Illustrated Book of 2019. And the New York Times book that I'm reading tonight, You Matter, Best Illustrated Book of 2019. Um his latest, latest collaboration with Matt De La Pena, uh, Milo Imagines the World, oh my gosh, received six starred reviews and was number one indie bestseller and New York Times bestseller. Ah, Milo, I haven't read that one to you. See, I have a whole list still to read. Milo Imagines the World is just an amazing book. But this book is called You Matter. And the first one for tonight, and I, I, well, yeah, this is for you guys. You Matter by Christian Robinson. You Matter. I love his opening end paper pages like this. It's for anyone who isn't sure if they matter, you do. The small stuff, too small to see. Those who swim with the tide and those who don't. The first to go and the last, you matter. When everyone thinks you're a pest, when something is just out of reach, when everyone is too busy to help, you matter. If you fall down, If you have to start all over again, even if you're really gassy, you matter. Sometimes home is far away. Sometimes someone you love says goodbye. Sometimes you feel lost and alone, but you matter. Old and young, the first to go and the last the small stuff too small to see. You matter. It's very, I love this book. It's just very simple. It can be read again and again and get, get all different directions and all different ways to think about it. And just so wonderful to think about the little tiny things that are all around us that really make a difference in our lives, but also the little instances that we all do that matter for someone else or for ourselves. Yeah, that's kind of important. 
Oh, anyway, so that was my first book for you guys tonight. Hi, there's Larry. Salut, Brian. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Larry's cousin Judy Nerdis just has illustrated children's books written by Lindsay Weissam Humphrey. Miss Babe Comes to America. It is hitting Amazon here before Christmas. Nice. I will have to look that up. Okay. Get my notes. Write them down. Miss Babe Comes to America by Lindsay... Wiseman Humphrey. Oh, I'll have to look that up. That would be a good one. Yay. Um, hey, there's Fatima. Yeah. Hi. Nice to have you here. Travel Dreamer 46 is Fatima. You matter. It's a great title, isn't it? Yeah. When it, sometimes there's those books that um, they don't have a lot of words and that's the wonderful things about picture books is that it can be so few words and can be translated so many into many languages and still the pictures carry on and what it means and what it says it doesn't have to be complicated the whole concept of us mattering being important should not be a complex subject. And so being able to express it in so few words and with these illustrations really kind of pushes that point clear through about it's, you know, it's the simple things. It's every little thing that matters. Yay. I knew it was happening and Release me. Yay. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Angie, for letting us know what freaks you out. <laughs> what, Brian? What freaks you out, Brian? When she uses your government name. <laughs> oh, I've always uh, been Angie to my family. Yeah. It's how I first signed up, and I don't know how to change it. Okay. <laughs> to the point, it could be fabulous writing prompt for high school and middle school. Yes, it would be a really, you know, and the thing is, is that all these writing prompts, um, when I taught elementary school, when I taught kindergarten, people would always say, well, you know, the kindergartners are not going to write. And I, I taught um, sixth trait writing at the University of Washington, in summer classes, I taught teachers. I was one of the trainers of teachers in the state. I did several other different writing classes, and I taught uh, this whole, all, all kinds of stuff in writing. And my kindergartners were, were writing books by the end of the year. And it was one of the things that at the spring fair, the science fair, <laughs> that we would do this big science fair, Karen's and my kindergartners always had science reports with Ill, the crazy kind of things that they built, but their reports that they would write and people would say, what? And we, we just did it from day one. We just, just, and there, there's a really, you know, there was a real simple way of, of getting them to understand what kind of words went together. You know, there was a the word. What's a noun? A noun is a the word. If you can put the in front of it, it's a noun. It's a thing. It, a the. The ball. The box. The, you know, um, and and it can what? Um, if it can this, if it's a can word, it's a verb. I mean, it's can jump. It can roll. It can do. We just had so much fun and they got into it like crazy and then if they couldn't quite spell it it was no big deal they would just ask one of the second graders in the room or first graders or a kindergartner who could spell or we just left it however it was and they could read it because it was in their own spelling <laughs> oh your government name government government name Angel. <laughs> Angel. 
This is by Helen on the island. Who lives by Helen? Oh, Helen? I live, I live. Mm. Just makes me think. How sweet. Okay. I taught and trained six traits too. They can write. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fatima, where are you? Where do you live? Um, I'm, I'm in Washington, not too far from Larry and Angie. They're in Tacoma area. I'm on the Key Peninsula. Helen is up on Woodby Island. I'm on the southern tip of Key Peninsula. But where are you? Um, that's cool. Yeah, six trait was an amazing thing. All kids need to graduate. Oh, Lupe, that's so nice. I had so much fun teaching writing. It was, yeah. I even taught middle school, junior high, it, it kids who were... <sighs> It was a class at the University of Washington in the summer. And so you can imagine the kids that were going there. Um, oh, in Michigan and Detroit. Um, the kids that were going there were not real thrilled about being in summer school, but their parents thought it was very um, cool that they would get into this program. And most of them were from Lakeside or from some, and Lakeside is a school that Bill Gates went to. And, um, you know, and so they were like this. So the, the the first day that these kids who had been in just like they had, you know, they had all early on. This was years ago. They had computers before most kids had personal computers. And they were so used to that they were going to have to do this assignment. And what was the assignment and how many pages that we we're going to do? And Karen and I walked into this class and we threw down a bunch of old magazines and we told them to tear out pictures that they liked and collage them together and then we wouldn't tell them anything else and they were like what no 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 scissors no no uh-uh here's glue and tear wouldn't let them cut wouldn't let them do that made them just like and glue and nah -uh, and collage here's the paper scrunch it up do this and then they had to write a story based on the collage that they made. And they were just so used to being in this strict realm of everything fit in a little box. And, and that first week of that class, we closed the we closed that box and taped it up with duct tape and wouldn't let them anywhere near it. And <laughs> It was great. I still have the books, the stuff that they wrote. It was pretty fantastic. Yeah, by the end of that summer, they were doing pretty dang well. It was pretty funny, but anyway, so fun. Okay, now the next book I'm going to read is um, another one. And it's just a crazy, I, I thought, I thought, okay, does this even match up a little bit with this? And I think it does. Um, i got to get it back. It is by... I'm not back at the beginning here. Sorry, you guys. Bob is pretty sick. He's been not real health. His, he, we think he had, he's got bronchitis. He's going to the doctor tomorrow. He's got bronchitis, and he hasn't been able to sleep. And the cold that he has got worse, and so he's finally going to go to the doctor tomorrow. But, yeah, it's when he coughs all night, it means that I don't get a lot of sleep. But that's okay. Um, so I didn't quite have everything quite ready on this book. But I've read it, and I like it. it I, th I think it fits really well. So the author of this one is um, <laughs> Maggie Tokuda Hall, and her website is just a hoot. The name of her website is Pretty Okay Ma Maggie. <laughs> I love it. Um, she's an author, a mediocre amateur baker, and a human being of questionable judgment. Now, right off the bat, that tells me I'm going to like this author. Um, she wrote a book called Love in the Library. <laughs> and what else about her? Here it is. Um, she's a book of also an octopus, which is what I'm going to read to you, illustrated by Benji Davis. Um, and she wrote, wrote, wrote The Mermoid and The Witch and The Sea, The Squad. Um, she lives in Oakland, California with her husband and son and a perf objectively perfect dog. 
She has a BA in studio art from Scripps College and an MFA in writing from the University of San Francisco. She's represented, well, who she's represented and who you can follow her by. Um, she has a blog out, uh, The Mermaid, The Witch, and The Sea. has some things that she's done. Other things, those are her books. Squad, that looks like a, a um, looks like it would be a graphic novel but also an octopus. This is the one I'm reading tonight. It is illustrated by Benji Davis. He's an illustrator, an author, and an animation director. He was studied animation at the university where he learned how to tell stories and pictures from short films and music videos. Hmm. To title sequences and picture books. In his work, he aims to capture how it feels to be a child. His first self-penned picture book, The Storm Whale, won an inaugural Oscars Book Award Prize and was Dutch Picture Book of the Year. So he's obviously Dutch. His second book, Granddad's Island, won the Children's Picture Book category of the AOI World Illustration Awards and was crowned Children's Book of the Year at the Sansbury Children's Book Awards. Both books have since been adapted for the stage. That's pretty cool. He's the illustrator of Nosy Crows, internationally best-selling board books. Oh, um, series Busy Bear. Oh, that's right. There are these books. Busy Bear. He illustrates those Nosy Crows books. And what oh, what is he doing? Mm -hmm. Where? Oh, about. Here I am. And he, um, he works and supports the work of CLPE, the Children's Book Show Pathways. And he lives in East London with his wife and daughter. So yeah, so this is the book I'm reading next. It's called Also an Octopus. Also an Octopus by Maggie Tokuda Hall and Benji Davis. says, also an octopus or a little bit of nothing. See, that's where I got my little bit of nothing. Matters. Every story starts the some, same way. With nothing. And every story needs a character. Any character you can imagine, like a little girl, or an adorable bunny, or better yet, an octopus. An octopus who plays the ukulele. But in order for it to be a story, and not just an octopus, that octopus needs to want something like a sandwich. No onions, please. Or a friend. Oh, hello. Or totally awesome shining purple spaceship capable of intergalactic travel. Yes. <laughs> but that ukulele playing octopus with intergalactic dreams just can't get a shining purple spaceship from, say, the drugstore. And just why not? Well, that would be silly. No, you're silly. And also, that would make for a very short, very dull story. For the story to be totally awesome as a purple spaceship, the octopus has to earn it by, say, building it out of soda cans and glue and string and umbrellas and glitter and waffles. I'm not really qualified to build a spaceship. But it does smell like waffles, so that's nice. <laughs> a 
But what if that spaceship doesn't work? Hmm. Then the octopus will try again, but this time with some help from an adorable bunny. Bunnies, while good friends, are not rocket scientists. Not usually, anyway. So the totally awesome spaceship isn't totally awesome yet. And it's certainly not capable of intergalactic travel. Or it's just a big mess. Thanks anyway, chum. By now, the octopus is starting to give up. The octopus feels heartbroken, as if the octopus will never, ever get on a totally awesome, shining purple spaceship and fly to other galaxies. The word you're looking for is despondent. So the octopus plays the ukulele because... Music is good for the heart. But as the octopus plays, a strange thing happens. The resolution to the story begins to take shape. People come to listen to the ukulele playing octopus. Hmm. Friends, strangers, lots of people. And a few of those people, <laughs> they're rocket scientists. It's true. Rocket scientists who don't just build rocket ships, they also play the saxophone and tambourine and trumpet and lute. So what happens next? That's up to you. When one story ends, it's just making room for another story to begin. And whether it's a story about a little girl, an adorable bunny, an octopus, rocket scientists, or a band, you've already got what it takes to make the story whole. Because every story starts with the same thing. Just a little bit of nothing. And everyone has a little bit of nothing. It's true. Okay, we have a rhinoceros water skiing and a girl with a pot on her head in a ranch wrench. I love that. Oh, and the, the rhinoceros is wearing a, uh, a ski hat. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's the rocket one of the rocket scientists. <laughs> and she wrote it to my grandparents, storytellers all. Let's see what the art was done. Uh, the illustrations were created digitally on this for this book. Very cool. I want a hippopotamus. <laughs> Christmas. Well, where did the rabbit get a rise rocket? I don't know, Larry. Where did not get his rocket? That's a story for you to tell. You know, you guys, it's like, I, I mean, I, I love this book for a lot of different reasons, just because you never know all those, the, the bits and pieces of how the stories turn and, and whatnot. But you never know what turn is going to take. When I started this channel over a year ago, you know, just under two days away from a year, tomorrow will be 365, and so the next day would be the first a year since I did it, it was not about reading stories. It was about 
my photography and doing some of that art. And along the way, <laughs> I sat back down and started to read stories and fell in with a crew of artists who were like rocket scientists to me, who took my stories and made me tell them better and made me share more and m made me more of who I am. And it has been absolutely glorious and it's so much fun. And these stories can speak to each of us in so many different ways. And this one spoke to me in about 12 different ways. And this one in it spoke to me this way, just as I was reading it about how the shift has changed in the path it goes, but it's all good. Oh. Despondent octopus, I know, despondent octopus. That's, that's a good puppet. We need, we need a puppet that says despondent octopus. <laughs> oh, kind of an Eeyore, an Eeyore type octopus. The Eeyore of the sea. Yes. So anyway, you guys, um, don't be despondent, Fred. <laughs> he got his rocket ship. Yay. Awesome book. A dream and idea. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Brian wants to know, who's got an idea? Such a cute book. Uh, oh, to be a child again. You know, that's the thing about reading kids' books. You can, um, oh my goodness, I hope. <laughs> I'm going to trust, trust that my, my um, moderator caught that. Yeah, I bet he did. Yep, I appreciate it more the second time around. Yeah, being a kid is, dang, Ryan, they followed you. <laughs> oh, good. That was a good one, Larry. Good. Yay. <laughs> Sturdy reading is an art. Well, you know, it's, uh, I had two of the very best, actually three um, of the very best storytellers in the world that um, uh, at the University of Washington. One was Dr. Post, Bob Post. He was my professor for oral interpretation of literature. And um, he, his, we did reader's theater with him. And in reader's theater, it's all about the voice. You don't get to move your hands and stuff. It's all about the voice and the placement and the change and all that. So he was very demanding in that way and what he did. The other instructor was Bob Post's good friend, but also rival in another field, was Sam Sebesta. And Dr. Sebesta was the um, professor of storytelling in English and in education department, and he was worldwide known as a storyteller. And Sam, this would have been back in... A, uh, the 80s, early 80s. And he had flamboyant down to an art when it came to storytelling. And, oh, Bob Post was as refined and dignified as they came as an instructor. Sam Sebesta was as wild and throwing his arms around and jumping around the room. I once watched him. In fact, he's the one who gave me the ideas about jumping on top of desks when I read Broom the Thunder Dragon. And he would do, I mean, his shoe would come off if he was reading Ickle Me, Pickle Me, Tickle Me Too, went for a ride in a flying shoe, and the shoe came off, and the shoe flew, and oh my God, it was crazy. And then the other was Aurora Valentin. Aurora Valentinetti and Aurora Valentinetti was the in the drama department she was the professor in my in my drama classes of puppetry and she was a world-class puppeteer and traveled all over the world we did the Indonesian kinds the shadow puppets and she but she had us building puppetry 
So between the three of them, I had some of the best experiences in college and getting my education degree um, in learning to be a storyteller. And it was pretty extraordinary. And I, I really was very thankful for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> he spanked them then. Oh, thank you. It's your... <laughs> Uh, Larry and, and Brian are having a discussion about whether it's Larry's cabana boy or the dating sites following Brian over. Who knows what they have. <laughs> but my moderator is taking care of that, hopefully. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Reported and blogging in my water. Yes, uh, me too. Yep. Gail, words can't express on having you share your time and talents with our lives will be greatly affected by your absence. Oh, Larry, thank you so much. Um, so this is kind of what I've come to. I'm, I'm going to take the hiatus through, gosh, when is it? Um, all right. So my plan and, and, and before I got Bryn's notice about their friend's little boy being dying, um, come on. Oh, why won't? Come on. There we go. Calendar is coming up. Um, my plan had been to take off through oh, Sunday. The, I, so the 19th will be my last show for two weeks. So one, two. So, um, I have to be down in Oregon for the 28th and the 29th and the 30th for sure. Um, I know Bryn and Danny have, have to fly to California for their friend's son funeral. And um, so I'm going to take care of Rory and Rook. I don't know if Bob is going to be able to come down or not because he has plans with Jeffrey and um, Jeffrey's ALS is progressing. And it's kind of um, so... He's any time he can spend with Jeffrey is really important. He's known him since he was four. And so um, my plan had been actually to get back on this by the fourth, but it may, well, tentatively, eh, criminy. Here, okay. Um, do, 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 do. First, second, third, fourth. Is the Sunday? Um, well, I know I'll be won't be back until it's probably. Hopefully, I'll be back in time to start again on the fourth. Um, I'm going to record a couple shows um, so that if I don't make it back from Oregon by the fourth, that I'll be able to jump in. But um, so that means my whole studio teardown and stuff all has to take place next week which is thanksgiving and then oh my gosh one one and two okay yeah that's good i can do that we'll do that so anyway that's what the plan is and then i think i'll start back with twice a week and we'll see if i can handle maybe three times a week get up to three times a week and still be able to get my photography done and the stuff done that i want to get done with that and um the other stuff i'll run it all by you guys um <sighs> yeah hey it's mona hi art flow by mo is here hi mona nice to have you here <laughs> oh yes um so tomorrow night this is um, 364. So tomorrow night is 365. It is 365 shows. Papa. The story I'm going to read is a very special classic. You might guess what it is when I tell you what to bring tomorrow night. But bring your listening ears and grab your favorite purple crayon. And be here for the story. The story was written in 1955. 
So I figure it's a little bit older than me, so it's appropriate to read it. But it still is a book that you will find in every school library, I hope. And as artists, it should be in your back pocket. Yeah. Or in your studio. Because it is a perfect book for artists and kids at heart. Yeah. So tomorrow night, I will see you all back here. And I, <laughs> yeah, I'm not crying. You're crying. I know. I know I am. I know I'm going to be crying. At like, like a bucket so I can tell I can tell but then and then I'm still going to read on Friday and Saturday and those uh are just some fun things I found just for extras and um uh, maybe even on on f Friday I might even pull in some of the old pieces of bits and show you <laughs> well no I don't know what I'll do I'm just moving on Somebody said, you should pull in some of your, all the progress you've made. And I mean, I'm doing that for Ecamm so that they can see the progress and, and doing a video for them. I'm like, yeah, can't we just forget about the days I sat back in the corner and it was all dark and all crazy. And, and the night that I read stories when I was, after I had my knee replacement, oh, that was sad. And all kinds of funny things. Ask Gail, she was here. Um, anyway, you guys... Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your support of this whole journey that I've been in. But most of all, thank you for becoming a community of friends that lift my spirit every day and means so much to me and helped keep me just believing and renewed in and positive and going forward and trying new things and being a lifelong learner and never giving up because yeah we don't have to we keep supporting each other all the time and you guys are the best and I just thank you so much from the bottom of my heart so until next time Keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around you. In every nook and corner. But the first place you'll find it, truly, the first place you will find it is when you look in the mirror and you'll see it looking right back at you. See you tomorrow.
we could be.